Hi guys, Jorge from Sharp 11 Music here and today I want to share with you this amazing Phil Woods lick he played over this blues on the Quincy Jones album. Um, that's what I like about jazz and the tune is a blues, it's called Walking. I transcribed this one together with an amazing Skype student of mine, Sai Schmidt. He came with this great solo and Phil is really smoking on this one. Before we get into this bebop outside superimposing lick, um, let me show you a second part of this solo, an earlier uh, section where he's actually using that same phrase but just in a different variation. <laughs> Okay, so as you might have noticed, it's actually a pretty structural pattern he's playing here. And it has to be seen in, in a minor context. If you take this first line... The last note feels like it's a root. If I take just the suggested chords on this line, it looks like a F minor seven here. So that means that the first note is the four or the 11, how you want to see it, doesn't really matter. He starts there and then he descends chromatically towards the third of our minor chord. Then he jumps up to the fifth, comes down to the nine, and then he makes another chromatic passing to tone down from the nine till the root. That's actually a pattern. It's really nice because actually what you hear is like bebop has a lot of chromatic passing tones. So if you just just look at the notes that are actually coming on the downbeat or at least on the downbeat of every eighth note, then you get just a minor line that sounds like but he connects it with some chromatics. First, the first two notes with a chromatic descending. Here it's nice, he, he makes the jump up towards the fifth because you cannot connect the third, the minor third and the nine with a half step, of course. So he takes the fifth uh, of, of our chord and then jumps back to, to the nine. And then he continues down with uh, another chromatic passing tone down towards the root. So it's a kind of simple minor pattern, but now it starts. It's the way he uses it that makes it really, really interesting and appealing, I think at least. So he has one more connection note, which is strangely enough, like a third down from our root before he moves on to the to the next part, the same phrase, but then modulate it. That C sharp is in there, it's really ghosted because it's not really a chord tone that, that is really inside, uh, but that doesn't matter. It's more kind of a glue note to glue it together. And then the next phrase is that exact pattern in E minor this time. So we are descending a half note. And if I play it after each other, so it starts to get, you know, like falling down the stairs. It has a really nice uh, vibe to it. And then comes really the icing on the cake because then you might expect he would uh, modulate it again half tone lower towards E flat, but he doesn't. He jumps actually a tritone, a tritone towards B flat minor. Check that out. It's the same pattern. So that's really out. So let's hear Phil play it himself once more so you can hear it in context. <laughs> So why does that work so well? Because if you look at the chords written above, he's kind of using the wrong minor chords. Even we are having a F sharp minor seven, he plays a F minor seven, and then there is a B seven and he plays kind of the, the E minor seven. So how does that make sense? Well, if you look at the E minor pattern, that's really inside. And we are going towards, a, it's a D, 
blues for alto saxophone so we are going towards a 2-5 towards D7. So you have that E minor 7 that you see in the second bar, but you can kind of anticipate that a bit. He anticipates it two beats and you can move that one forward. Okay, then that one at least makes sense. But why then the F minor? Well, that's kind of just some constant structure. He introduces the E minor with a half step up minor. That's a nice way of kind of outside introducing that E minor. That's quite hip. It's really, it um, widens your eyes quite a bit there. So that makes sense to me. And then we come to the, towards this, this weird tritone jump towards from E towards the B flat minor. Well there if we kind of keep on anticipating so what he is actually doing already he moved the E forward and then the A comes into the game the A7 and then you see he actually kind of pretends like the B flat minor is on top of the A7 and that ha has a real altered sound. The E flat is the sharp 11 or the sharp 4, the D flat or the C sharp is the third, that C is the sharp 9 and that B flat is the flat 9 that's like traditionally altered. You can also think of playing altered half a step higher than the root, in this case we have A7 half a step up minor melodic. That's a way of uh, getting quickly to, to the altered scale. Half tone higher melodic minor, uh, half tone higher from your dominant seven that is. So that's why, why it works so great I think. Our middle lick, the E minor, that's the one that is our kind of or pivot point and then he anticipates that uh, with the F half a tone higher and then after the E he wants to make his if you watch the 2 5 the relative 5 attached to that E minor 7 A7 he makes that altered. A great sound listen once more just to let that sing. <laughs> So what can we do with this? I'm not really a fan of studying uh, licks in all keys, always at least. For some licks it makes sense, for others they sometimes just sound well in a few keys, not in all keys. But this one I think is really nice due to the chromatic nature of it. It just has a very nice coming down the, the stairway. So if we do that, start at F, uh, let me play a few of them. And you can continue that all the way down. I'll post an exercise with this lick through all the keys uh, for our dear patrons. But another thought is that you don't necessarily have to play it only over minor. I think it could really sound nice if for example this F minor 7 if you use it on top of a D flat major 7 because then your first note becomes a 6 you come chromatically down towards the fifth then you jump up to the major 7 and then you have this sharp 11 chromatically coming down towards the third and you finish with the root. So let's try that. <laughs> So I think that sounds great as well. So that's two ways how you can use this little phrase. I would use this one in all keys. That really makes sense. It's a really fun shape to use um, on both minor and on major sharp 11. Yeah, guys, that's it for this week. I think this one is amazing. Check out that complete solo by Phil Woods. He, he surely knew how to bop. As you may have noticed, it's been a while since we posted licks of the week or the kind, but that's because we are quite busy and still are uh, with making a membership website with all this kind of stuff and way more in depth uh, lessons on saxophone, Timothy on guitar and deconstructing yeah everything like transcriptions solos um how to sound well and all that stuff so that's coming pretty soon really in a few weeks now and we're back in the game to making also of course a lot of free content here on youtube 
So if you would like to get more of this stuff, uh, subscribe, hit the like button and certainly leave a comment. I really want to know what you think about this lick and which might be a next good one to cover. Also hit me up with that here in the comment section below. I'm Jorgen Reimers from Sharp 11 Music.